Daniel. Say it again, Daniel. First, uh, what we want y'all to understand clearly and woe to the hour cup. We're just saying if you're wearing your garb to gain an advantage over your brother, you cheat in these scripts. Woo. And it's going to come out if you cheat. Because what's going to happen is the Most High going to send his correction while you got that garment on. We know a brother that's out of Memphis, Tennessee, on his mugshot in his garb when they brought him back from Jerusalem and brought him back to Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, no, who had this fight? Oh, that's not here. So, y'all, we don't want it to be misunderstood under none of our teachers. What we teach is the inside out. If you're with any camp that teaches outside and have you sending out for your Israelite form and starter kits, you better think twice. I don't care what you put on this corruptible skin and flesh, it ain't going to make it clean. Because every word we read in here, the garments we're going to wear is white and clean. And the manufacturer is Christ. It comes from Yahweh Shai Manufacturing. How you going to have friends on the Calvin Klein shirt and tell me this is what you got to have on? No, you repping our culture, but this ain't what's going to be in the kingdom. If you will bring this corrupt clothing into the righteous kingdom, then the flesh can't never be right either. There has to be a head of household in your temple or your holy, the holy place for the holy uh, uh, spirit to dwell in. And that's your personal temple. There has to be a head of household. The spirit has to rule the flesh. If you have equal, equal, the flesh rule Tuesdays and Thursdays, the spirit rule Thursdays and Fridays, you're going to have a problem because you got roommates in your temple. You don't have a head of household. The spirit has to govern the outer cup. If they strip you out of your garments, what you left at? You're not a servant no more. Huh? You're not a servant anymore? Yeah. They strip you out of your gear and put you in an orange jumpsuit. What you think they own? Oh. Uh, I'm just wondering if you had a tailor there, if I can get some fringes around the four corners of this orange <laughs> jumpsuit. Right. And, and, and if you can change those numbers on the back, 9, 4, 8, 5, 6, 2, uh, 3, 12. You think that's going to happen? You can't change bridge and prison guard into Hebrew Israelite guard on the fly. The clothing is on the inside. It's always been there. It was there with Abraham. 90 years before he was, what, 99 years before he was circumcised. Yeah. And y'all, the problem always going to be how was Daniel able to be dealt with, to interpret dreams, and dressed out in Babylonian clothes. We just said that when you are in bondage, you are subject to tributary. And that means this is our clothes and this is how we dress. You working at Jiffy Lou, you can't go in there with friends on that jumpsuit and say, Joe. You to deface the company. Dress code. Right. That's why I was always underneath. That was the new word. Was that they ain't got to put what's underneath. So y'all, we're gonna pick it right back up, and y'all, the topic that's been coming up also when we're talking about the outer cup and trying to make sure. And y'all, the outer cup. Another way we have to back. Look, and we were talking about traditions. I'm gonna get right back to what I was saying. The traditions of men. We do a handshake. Most Hebrews know it. That's a tradition of St. Louis uh, uh, that they part of keeping Israelites. But if we read in the scripture they give a holy kiss, you're like, I ain't kissing no nigga on the cheek. I'm going to do this. <laughs> then you have laid, a, laid aside the holy commandments for your own tradition. If we want to do a handshake, it can't get to the point where you're going to override what's written in there because you think somebody may think you're a homosexual. Well, those kisses would never lock in lips. 
and Google Eye. Right. No, none of that. No. So y'all, we're going to get right back into it, Leviticus 15 chapter, because there's some very important things in here about being clean unto the evening. And unclean, y'all, that a different high priest stated how it had to be. But the high priest now, our master, our rabbi, has told us to look at it from this perspective. So we got to be extra careful. Or we're going to have a lot of problems. We're going to be fighting up here. Or we're going to have these heavy burdens that, that the uh, ones who promote that won't carry themselves. And that's what we want to make sure, y'all, we don't put heavy burdens on anybody that we wouldn't carry ourselves. Down here, our burdens are our own. You got to put on you what you can bear. That's what the most I say. I ain't going to never put on you more than you can bear. Just like in the hour of prayer, Christ had nothing. It wasn't that he chickened out that song tried to say. But crucifixion is brutal. You suffocate. And you can't get, and then you ain't got no movement. You know, you can't just scratch your feet like this every now and then or roll like this and get that itchy spot. You up here like this, suffocating inside. Brutal. And when he said, Father, is done. But he had to go all the way. He had to let them look upon him. Those who pierced him had to look upon him. It's done after this. And Father took the spirit from him. But you control that. That's why a lot of times you get hurt. Somebody else, just keep your eyes open. Just keep, keep them open. Once you close them, you say, I've had enough. So that's, that is the reason they tell you, keep your eyes open. Come on, man. Come on. Now, if the death angel is in full snatching mode, you can have your eyes buck like Bojangles if you want to. You get the out of here. Let's get it. We're in the Vedic's 15th chapter. We got that. Hey, bro. What verse? Start at verse 1. Leviticus chapter 15, verse 1. Yes, sir. Y'all, what we're talking about is the outer cup. Leviticus 11, Deuteronomy 14, that went over the clean and unclean. And y'all, we got to be careful what words we use. Kosher ain't found in the Bible. Kosher actually means ceremonial clean by a rabbi. We are out of ceremonial clean. Understand, we're all moral clean. That's where you self-check before somebody have to tell you. Morally clean means I've already done self-check. I'm cool on this. You know, kosher is designed. This guy over here will tell you if you're good enough to enter in. What you got back there, bro? Hey, so like, so if you say like kosher, what do you mean? Right? It's clean, but understand that's how they want you to view it. They want you to view it from their perspective of old Phariseeism and maybe Jewish traditions. Kosher. The Bible from Genesis to Revelation talks about clean and unclean. That's just another way to slip the rabbi teaching in. Yes, it's clean. It's like Paul said, well, eat what's in the marketplace as long as it ain't sacrificed to idols. So just cause it say a beer meat market. They do all clean meat, it's still a beer meat market. You got to make sure a beer ain't got no sign over that to say fresh cut lamb by the blessings of Allah. You can't buy that. Right. I don't care because ain't no pork blade never cut across it. <laughs> Leviticus 15 chapter. Go ahead, brother. chapter 15, verse 1. What it say? And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When any man has a running issue out of his flesh, because of his issue, he is unclean. So, we're talking about men first. See, the Bible deals with both groups of people. It's a, a running issue. Usually these running issues will cause us to go down on Grand and Dale. Uh, <laughs> some of y'all have been around there. And we know what his flesh is because we get into Ezekiel 16 and Ezekiel 30. 
13, we know what flesh is. What flesh is talking about. Let's go. And this shall be his uncleanness in his issue. Whether his flesh run with the issue or his flesh be stopped from his issue. It is his uncleanness. So even if he, they sent him on the Walgreens or CVS or wherever it is with the prescription and it stopped, it's still unclean. See, you have to get in your mind what caused the uncleanness. That's what has to get, be gotten rid of versus the mess. Because all you're going to do is stock up on that prescription and keep doing that. When you're going to run into something more dangerous than that medicine can handle. And it's got three, four words. What? It's, it's huh? You know the small letters I mean to say. Huh? Age? No. K I D S. Key. That's what I mean. That's 18 years Because you're dilly dally and you're not prepared for it. Where we at? Verse what? Verse 3. This is the Verse 4. Uh, verse 4. Every bed wherein he lieth that had the issue is unclean, and every thing wherein he sitteth shall be unclean. So, being that we were under the schoolmaster at this point when it was getting down, it was still the art of Christ now because it's a moral thing. How would anybody know you had that issue unless you told them? Or you were, stains were showing in your clothing wherever you went to. One or the other had to be, or you had to be morally step aside, or somebody else would acknowledge he's supposed to be here. We saw him at the doctor yesterday. So you didn't want that to have to be there. So the priesthood changed from a more physical thing, outward cup, to, to where it's internal, to where the Most High say, if you think to look on a woman and look at her, you might as well do it. Don't waste your time. Go ahead and complete the act because you've already done that. This is how serious it is with Christ when we move it up to war, when you're governing the spiritual laws. You don't even think these things. If they come in, you, you don't dilly dally with them, you push them right out. Not versus <coughs> in, the, in the high priest of earth, you can say, as long as two witnesses don't catch me, I can keep on doing this. I can keep on doing it. Right. But when you move to spiritual law of Christ as it was in the beginning when he gave it to Adam, when they were created for immortality, as the wisdom of Solomon, second chapter, say, created for immortality. There's a different character or mindset you got to think from, not from the outside, but from the inside. Why do I keep looking at her like that? You know the next imagination coming in your mind. Where we at? Verse what? Verse 5. Uh -huh. And whosoever touches his bed shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until the evening. So it wasn't a, something that could take you out of the fold of the Most High. We got to be careful that when you're saying you're unclean, you cannot participate in anything. There was different types of, of uncleanness. You know, if you know you got running issues, don't come down here and sit on nothing where that running issue can get on something. Be up here before you even leave the house. No, this is worse than I thought. I need to stay at home today. If you say I got to be there, how you gonna got to be here and spread this problem? Y'all want y'all to know this Ebola? That's the, these unclean guys is the least of your words if you contact that. Because you bleed out of every orifice on your body. Every word that air can get in, blood comes out of that. And then you die hard. So y'all, these plagues are starting to run rampant. We got to be extra careful. And these are moral things. You don't think that boy knew when he got on that plane coming over here if he had been in contact with them people? How you gonna govern that unless it comes from the inside? How you gonna govern that? How you gonna tell him? You show you ain't been around no Ebola folks. I swear I ain't been behind no, nobody with no Ebola. <laughs> Because you don't want to be quarantined. Right. Let's read some more. Verse 6. Uh -huh. <clears throat> and he that sitteth on anything whereof he sat that had the issue shall wash his clothes 
and bathe himself in water and be unclean to the east. So we have to understand that if I didn't tell you that's an unclean chair, how would you know you unclean? Or how would anybody know who's sitting behind somebody else? We ride public transportation, don't we? Hmm. What, how you know the seat you sitting in now, a woman just didn't get up from there? And a heavy crank. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about it still a few tablets of money that go around the floor. <laughs> <laughs> and you just plop down. <laughs> Where we at? Verse 7. And he that touches the flesh of him that had the issue shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water, and be unclean until the evening. So now we move into to moral character, what dominates <coughs> flesh and the spirit conquers the flesh. It's, it's just the spirit of the Most High will protect you from all of the things that may be out there, all of the elements. we we'll read Mark 16 and we say, look, if this happened to you, you're going to be clean from them things. If a serpent bites you, this ain't going to happen. <laughs> If you drink any poison, this ain't going to happen. Long as the spirit of the Most High is the head of the household in your temple. If your flesh is there evening, they show up at different times, mm -hmm. you got roommates running your body. If your spirit is evil and it's still running the flesh, all it means is that the flesh is just going to become more evil. So y'all, we got to make sure we understand who's running the head of the household and for every woman as we read these things. Look, who in here going to stand up and say, man, I was making it rain and I got an issue. So I got, who going to publicly admit that? He ain't going to marry nobody else. Once that word get out, what you got, man? That's the definition of issue. Uh-huh. Uh, it's from the Hebrew word Zawab. Zawab, the number is 2101. Court, and it means a flow, an issue, discharge, flux, semen, venereal disease. Mm. And then it says gonorrhea. Oh! <laughs> right. <laughs> Yo, gonorrhea. look, the same thing that caused them problems today wow. caused them back then. Right. <laughs> right. Ain't nothing new under the sun. No. <laughs> so when we're talking about being unclean to evening, there's a lot of things me and brother talked about the other day. When does the Sabbath start? Is the morning and the evening two parts of the 12 hours of the day? Or is it the 24? Can we find in the script from evening to evening on anything? Or do we see sundown start a new day? Does evening start a new day? Or is evening part of the morning hours? A lot of questions out there, y'all, that we got to be ready for. Because the evening there was 12 hours in the day, like Christ said, another 12 hours in the night. When did the Sabbath worship start? Is there anywhere anybody transgressed the Sabbath in the 12 hours of the night recorded? No, it never really don't work at night. Everybody went to sleep. <laughs> but y'all know what went on at night sometimes. So everything, every commandment was given at the break of dawn. So where does the staff seven really start and where does it really end? You know, we want to be extra careful in case these things come up on us, you know, because he separated, he called the light day and he called the night no. I mean, uh, called the dark night. And then he said, I give the sun to rule the daylight hour and I give the moon to rule the night hours. So you're going to have a problem if you're trying to just say the moon governs the calendar and everything, the whole solar system, the moon does it. You're going to run into a problem because you're going to run out of days. Because days dwindle, the moon dwindles in her perfection, but the sun don't. What you got? So is it, is it the same sundown Friday to sundown Saturday? Can you clarify that please? Well, what we're talking about is when the Sabbath day starts. So we know day starts at night. A new day starts at night. So what is evening? It, does it say evening or does it say sundown? They're two different things. They're not the same thing. Evening is what the concordance of scripture call twilight. It's that, that time period that separates the day hours from the night hours and give you time to let you know how far you are going before you get into a new day. It's called twilight. 
cricket score. It, well, most of us understand it when we're trying to get home. So you don't have to say I stayed out all night. If you get in at twilight, the sun ain't really up. You ain't stayed out all night. So we use it for the wrong purpose, so to speak. But in the summer days, it's up to 55 minutes of twilight before it goes dark. And that means you can't really see the sun. It's governed by the heavenly lights in Genesis 1 and 1, 1 and 2. Because the sun and the moon were created to the fourth day. So what light is that? And while all these vampire movies y'all see, twilight, they never, you never see the sun and the moon. It's just that great background. It's just twilight that they operate in. It's a very powerful time for prayer or what we call the evening prayer was done in twilight. Very powerful time when you read through the scriptures, those prayers at even. You know, but to say even to even, the only way we get that in is, is what, the Feast of uh, Tabernacles? Pentecost is where, right, man? It's, it's where the days run from this evening to that evening. But sundown starts a new day because it's dark. But the morning and the evening are part of the 12 hours of the day. And we see that noon is the beginning of evening. That's why you say 12 noon. And they named the third hour of the day, the sixth hour of the day. Christ was on the cross from the 12th hour of the day, they said in evening, to the third to the ninth hour of the day, up to what was that, 2 to 3 p.m.? And then they had to get them down, get them prepared before the Sabbath come in the next morning. So did they get them down, clean them all up, wrap them all up, get them in the tomb in that 55 minute time span? Or did they go all night with this preparation because it says it was dawning toward the Sabbath day? And they got out of there, out of the tomb before the Sabbath day started where they could have been, the eyes would have been on them. Y'all breaking the law. Y'all breaking the law. Y'all breaking the law. Or were they in violation if they was prepping him at night? Doing that for two hours. These are just questions I'm throwing out, y'all. This ain't like we, we're trying to blow something over your head. It's just questions that may come up that we have to be prepared for to answer. So what actually is the Sabbath? The Sabbath day is from the day dawn till evening. The question is, is there a Sabbath night? For those 12 hours, is there anywhere recorded that we can see trouble on the Sabbath night? Because it's identified what, how long Christ will be in the grave. How long did it say? Three days. Three days, three days. Three days and what? Three days. So there's 12 hours of the day, 12 hours of the night. So it lets you know we include both to complete the whole day. Now, if evening to evening is a whole day, if it's from, from this, I'm not saying by no means the day don't start at sundown. The day always starts at sundown. The new moon starts at the dark moon. You can't even see it. We came out of darkness into the light. So we understand that pattern ain't changed. It's just the fact, do we put evening at night, or is it part of the 12 hours of the day? That's what the question is, because you're going to see things that keep saying, at evening, the self-same day, not a new day. But the self-same day, you're going to have to answer those questions. It, because it's saying it's still part of that same day that started at the dawn when Christ was resurrected, right? You know, it was dawning toward the first day of the week. So, and he is called the day dawn or the bright and morning star. So it begins with him, with the light. So y'all, it's just some things out there that... We and bro chopped it up, and we're going to present a class that where it's thoroughly understood so we don't get evening and sundown mixed up. Because you're going to run into a few problems throughout the rest of the scripture with words called in the self-same day that this happened. And if they were doing these things three or four hours before evening, then how can it be the self-same day that it happened? If you're darkness and you're into a new day. 
So y'all just things we have to go over. And we are by no means the Sabbath, if, if it's 12 hours of the night, if the night starts and day starts Friday, sun down. Not Friday evening, sun down. Then that's what it is. That's when the Sabbath starts. And it ends at evening of the next day because sundown will start another new day. So it's evening part of the daylight, 12 hours. That's the question we need to know. That's the question we have to get understood and presented to where any script that come up against that is going to be handled. Right. Because only two feast days it go from evening to evening. Yeah. Feast of uh, what? Unleavened bread from evening to evening? The tabernacle. If it were else, you won't read about the Sabbath the evening. You'll see at sundown before the, the closed gate before the dark. But twilight is the period that lets you know a new day is finna start. We may be right into the Sabbath of a new day. And that's the start of Sabbath day. So that twilight gives you time. Get hurt and get home. Stop what you're doing. You look up, see the signs in the heavens. That's what he gave us the signs for. Look up in case you don't have a watch. You can't be looking at this, looking for 6 o'clock. It's not correlated with the signs in the heavens. <laughs> you have to watch what twilight. Let me put you in a perfect example. When you turn your coach lights on the car instead of riding the coupe, you don't want to turn the headlights on just yet. Turn the fog lights on. Turn the park lights on. Park lights on. Evening tide. Twilight. Probably. Let's read some more of the veterans, y'all, because we ain't got long, about 20 minutes. <laughs> Who got a question? <laughs> Well, it's the problem we, we, that we're running into now. You got some Israelites only go by the sun, 364.5 days. Right. You got some pumping the moon. What's that, what's that uh, uh, exit that they use? Oh, they 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 that they only use the lunar calendar. Or they say the moon governs everything. The only problem with that, you're going to run out of days. You're going to have 28.5 days. You're going to, instead of 30 days here, so what's going to happen is you're going to lose 11 days. So no, 11 days every how many years, man? Three years or four years? Now you lose 11, 11 days every year. Every year. So every three years is a whole month. So after about three years of that, guess what day the Sabbath is going to fall off? It could be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday. But the sun sets the weekly Sabbath. The moon usually set feet Sabbath. A lot of times, and you see, and then if you're going by the first of the month, when you see it, you got the first, the eighth, the fifteenth, the twenty-second, and then the third. You got a problem with days only going to twenty-eight days. I mean, just just so the Romans go by by the spring. Rome went by 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 solar only. Okay, so that's what modern Christianity does right. by solar only. So, like the January we just governs now was also Rome. Yeah, because that's where it comes from. <coughs> well, but it's always been in the scripture, but our lights, when we read about in Genesis, they work together, not separately. That's the problem. Men of today are separated. Hebrews who only go after the moon are nothing more than Hebrew Muslims. Right. Hebrews that go only after the solar calendar are nothing more than Christian Hebrews. Christianity Hebrews, I should say. Not Christian. Hebrew, but Christianity Hebrew, they're basing everything off the 364 days, but they gonna, it's going to throw them off on the feast day because they exclude the moon. And then like vice versa, the other way, if you exclude the sun, then you're only going to have feast days and you will never be able to account for a weekly Sabbath that's getting every week like it's supposed to. Right. Every week of the year because the sun ain't going to change it and the moon and the moon in its glory diminishes. And it gives you the sign of the woman in the same way doing her monthly. Some days it can be light months. Some days it can go four, five days. Some days it's seven to the end. But some days it diminishes. As they get older, it starts to diminish. So you can't govern on that alone when it has diminishing qualities in it. Because you have to add leap years then. And then you got the problem with Genesis 9 where it was 360 days that they said it was up on the mountain for five months. It said, well, well it, it said 30 days, they was up there five months, and, or however many it lists, it lists the number of days that they said 150 days. 
and it said five months. So you break that down, that's 30 days a month, right? Well, according to the lunar calendar, you had 354 days, 0.5. Yep. You owe for six days somewhere. Yep. Because they'll look up, they'll look up, and they'll be keeping Passover in the middle.